This is absolutely tremendous, a stunning piece of bush out here. So utterly diverse, this particular area, which is what really has drawn me out today. Um, I'm out here just for a night, just going to camp a night, and um, I'm, I've wandered my way through old existing forestry trails because this used to be a, a um, an area where they felled a lot of the or a lot of the, lot of the jarra. I'll show you some of the massive stumps that are left from back in the day that have been felled. There's one I can see just here, a big king jarra, big king jarra stump. That thing is huge, and that would have been it would have been here a long time because the uh, the she oaks and the other smaller jarrys jarrys that are now growing around where that king jar used to be. Yeah, they're old trees now themselves. <laughs> so, yeah, that would have been felled a long time ago. Well, this is incredible. This is an old jar, old king jar stump. This is a massive, a massive stump, mate. This is, this would have been a pretty, a pretty big old tree back when they felled it. It's all hollowed out now. Fire, fire has a part to play in that. Just just sitting there as, as a memory of an old tree now. Incredible. Now you've got all these she oak trees that are growing up around it, taking its place essentially. Very common little tree, this one. Pulgala, or uh, Banksia grandis. Bull, Bull Banksia, it's got a few names. Beautiful Banksia tree. And they'll have, this is a juvenile one, it's pretty small. But they grow this beautiful big flower. Big yellow, yellow flower, typically in summer, December, January. It's actually a bush tucker. It's got a nectar, a beautiful nectar on it. The bees love it. The cockatoos love them too. Very sweet, you dip them in water and you'll get a beautiful sweet drink out of it. You can heat it up, make a tea. But you can actually make a mead out of it as well, so mead, alcoholic. So the Noongars, they would be able to drink enough of the stuff and it would make them actually drunk, intoxicate them. So, a pretty cool tree, a good bush trucker tree. I did see some small juvenile flowers over here. Yeah, here we go, look at that. So these little flowers, these will get to, imagine this, about 40 centimetres long. Very cool. Full of honey, full of nectar. Dip them in a cup, a little bit of bush tucker. Yeah. Now you see these plants, these trees, they're common in the jarra forest. So they're very common to chew at woodlands and jarra, jarra forests. You see them all through these areas. Of all sizes too, they'll grow up to about 10 metres. There's quite a lot of them laying around down here on the ground as well. There's one right here actually. It's snapped at the trunk, come falling to the ground. Walking around these forests, it gets particularly hard trying to identify sort of what you're looking at. Especially in these areas that have had fire come through and uh, everything's black because it's a, it's a little bit easier to identify some of these typical gums that you'll find around in these forests by their bark. But once the fires come through, that sort of becomes a little bit hard as well because they all uh, are typically grey bark, a grey tree. Uh, the the Mary is a little bit more brown, a little bit more. Uh, and, but then once they've been burnt, they all they all look very much the same. Their barks are black, and it becomes a lot harder to identify. Let's look at the she oaks. It's got a very different leaf. 
this is a little bunch of she-oaks here. Pine needle leaves, as you can see. A very distinct brown bark. Even after it's been burnt, it's very brown, it's obvious. You can see it standing out amongst the gum trees. Very much so. And there's a lot of, a lot of she-oak in here. She-oak's also, let's have a look on the ground, she-oak's also got a particular little flower. So you can see this particular little flower. It's not really, not really typical of what you would see from a gum tree. So identifying these trees, well, let's look at the Mary tree. Here's a Mary. Here's a great example for a Mary. Quite a thick, oh, little spider in there hiding. Quite a thick bark. Quite a, quite a notchy bark, especially after it's been burnt. It's not a massive stump. Probably still, I'd still call that a juvenile. But you can see here it's leaching. See this red bark, or the, the red sap on the bark. It's a bloodwood. They call it they call it a bloodwood. So it leaks leaks this red. See some more here. It leaks this red red bark that you see on the tree. So that's that's one easy way. Just looking at the tree itself to identify. Okay, that's a. I know that's a Mary. That's what a Mary tree does. I'm fairly confident that's a Mary. The Mary tree has the biggest of the honky nuts, or the biggest, the biggest of the, of the nuts, the flowers. This one's actually in perfect condition. Quite often you'll find them. Here we go. And they will have been absolutely decimated by the cockatoos. <laughs> so that would be a red-tailed cockatoo. So you can you can tell by the honky nut. I'm going a little bit off track, I know, but you can tell by the honky nut even what bird has been eating at the tree. I'm not sure if I'm gonna find, oh here we go, look at that, perfect. So here you can see this has probably been uh, eaten by a a borden, I would say. Because they have the longest, the borden has the longest bill, the longest beak of our three native black cockatoos. So the longer the bill, the easier it is for them to grab the nut and then they get their tongue down in there they don't know, they don't have to get the nut open they just need to hold it in there in their beak and then they're able to get their tongue down in there and retrieve the nut and everything else moisture there's water in there they get water content from these as well so they they really don't destroy the nut so you have a look the difference in these honky nuts the damage to them red tail definitely a red tail He's destroyed that to get his get his cheeky little tongue in there because he's got a tiny beak. And then that's a borden. So anyway, going back to what I was talking about, these Mary, these Mary trees, they have the biggest, the biggest nut of the gum trees that we'll get in our southwest. So you can identify a Mary usually by what's around underneath it. So you eat the they eat the jarrah nuts as well. So they've been getting right into them. The bark on a jarrah tree is a lot, a lot slimmer, a lot, uh, a lot sort of streamlined, and um, and a bit longer. The bark, the bark itself is a bit stringier, a bit longer as well. Just moved myself down the track a little bit to camp for the night. More of this beautiful tall timber country. Plenty of old stumps around from back in the day when they were felling it all. Another big one. Sun's getting down now. I'm going to get this awning out. Get set up. Get ready for a beautiful night here out in the bush. 
amongst these jarrow trees, marrow trees. Oh, mate. She oaks, not a puff of wind. Red tails are playing around. Sun's getting low. Fresh air. Yeah, it's getting cold. It's going to be a chilly night. Oh, I just love it. I just love it. Tremendous. As Andrew St. Pierre White says, does it give you the fizz? Yep. In case you're watching, Andrew, this definitely gives me the fizz. Yep. Definitely gives me the fizz.
Well, that was pretty good timing. The rain started. <laughs> I just finished eating and started to pack it up. It's alright, worked out pretty well. Drizzling. It's not rain, it's drizzle. Quite moody. It's a shame to have to pack and rack. I could quite happily throw that billy back on. Have a cuppa and just sit and enjoy it for a while. Now, that's life. Thank <laughs> you. 